Hello everybody. In this video I just wanted to quickly talk through the process of creating Instagram video but using PowerPoint. I've written a, a longer post about this on Medium which is linked in the description below. So in this video I'm not going to go over the background of it, I'm just going to go through some of the button clicking parts of it. So here's the video that I created. So you get the idea. It's the kind of video that we're seeing more and more on social media platforms using images and sound to give us uh, some visual interest and then using the text and animation in the text to give us visual interest and to drive a kind of editorial line forward. So this is the kind of video that if you have um, video editing applications it's relatively straightforward to be able to put together but if you don't have access to that kind of thing then PowerPoint might be a good alternative. So if we switch over to PowerPoint, you can see here your standard Microsoft PowerPoint uh, welcome screen for adding new presentations. I'm going to use the Windows version of PowerPoint from Office 2013 here. If using the Mac version, things won't be that much different. There are one or two things that you can't do um, on the Mac version, but the menus are pretty much the same. Um, also, if you're on a Mac and you're using Keynote, then quite a few of the things that we'll be looking at here, you can also do on Keynote. And the thing um, that uh, really makes this uh, possible on PowerPoint and on Keynote too, is the option to be able to export your final presentation. So instead of just saving it as PowerPoint, you can create a video. And this is the thing that really enables us to look at PowerPoint and Keynote as production platforms for the kind of video that might work on social media platforms. So if I go back to the new section, I'm going to go with a default blank presentation. Now by default, um, PowerPoint is going to give us this widescreen template. And actually, you could use this process to and this template to create video for things like uh, Twitter and to some extent things like um, YouTube, um, which will be quite happy with this as a, as a layout. You don't need to make any changes and you can follow the same process with that. But I'm going to concentrate on the kind of socially shareable native stuff. And of course, if we're talking about Instagram, that means it's square. So if I go up to design and slide size, you can see those are the standard ones. But if I go to custom slide size, all I'm going to do here is set that to be square. So I'm going to go with 40 centimeters by 40 centimeters. Now this is entirely arbitrary. As long as the width and the height are the same, then however many centimeters you work with, I guess really is just down to the file size at the end of the day. And so then as soon as we click OK, we get the option here to say, do you want us to resize everything to fit within the um, kind of uh, fit within the window, or do you want us to squeeze it so that the whole image fits? At this point, Regardless of what these mean, it really doesn't matter um, because we've got no content, um, it's a blank file. So here we go, we've got now we've got a square slide that we can work with, and it's that nice native format. Um, and if we wanted to, we could apply any of the um, preset um, slide styles that are available there in uh, PowerPoint. And that's the nice thing about using something like PowerPoint is that uh, we've got all of these preset options, all of these formatting options, and some of them are a bit corny and a bit corporate, but having access to all of these tools in a way that people might be more familiar with. So people might not be familiar with video editing packages, but they might be familiar with PowerPoint. So if I go back to the home button, this is where I can start to play around. So I can change, actually, if I go back to design, I can change the background here to be a nice color. And then I can go over to home and I can start to put some text in. And of course, as soon as I've uh, added the text there in that text box, then I've got control over the general formatting. I can change the color of the text. I can make it bigger and you can see how it resizes to fit in the screen. I can also change the font sizes, and move them around and basically start to position that in a way that makes it um, kind of look nice for us on the screen. And then I can move on to my next slide. And so if I go new slide, let's go with the blank. In this slide, I could add an image. 
to my background. So if I click insert, which is where all of my different options of things that I can add, if I click pictures and a standard Windows dialog pops up, I'm just going to pick um, an image at random in here. There's the image. And then what I can do is resize that image. And you can see then I can position that image to make sure that I get the bit that I want on screen. At this point, what we can also do with the image selected and looking at the format tab is we can start to do some basic corrections in brightness and in contrast. We can add effects, but what we can also do is crop that image. And I like if I'm working in a sort of non-standard format or the image is, uh, or the piece of media that I'm working with is bigger than the frame, I tend to uh, like to resize that to fit actually within the frame because then when I'm positioning text and things like that, then I know this gray area around it is an area that um, is where the text is going to be invisible. And then I can insert some text and shapes over the top. Now when I do this, I like to keep the background shape and the text separate because it just means that when I come to edit stuff later on, um, I can have a little bit more control, particularly with animating and uh, adding animations and transitions. So here's a, a background color. And again, I can change that to be that, uh, slightly darker. And I can also add a level of transparency there so that I can see through the background. And that's where my text box, that's where my text is going to appear. And then if I go back to insert, I can add a text box so for the text that's going to appear here in here and again I can make sure that I've got that text box selected and I can resize that text and get that so that it fits within the box there again Add a little bit of formatting to that text, just so I'm happy with it. That looks pretty neat. One of the other things that you also see is that keywords are often highlighted. So I can take just that bit of text there and change the text color to be yellow. That seems to be a, a little gold. That seems to be kind of a popular color for this kind of thing. Um, and so you can see there I've got my text box in the background. It just kicks the um, text a little bit more. And then I've got the actual text box itself. So I can use a mix of the tools, of the shape tools, of the text box tools, and all of the formatting tools that are available to get some quite complicated and some quite interesting designs on the screen. The next thing I might want to do is actually animate the text itself. If I select the text box, and it's important that you select the text box rather than the shape in the background or the actual text itself. And if I move over to animations, so again, these are the standard animations that move objects around the page rather than transitions, which move from slide to slide. We'll look at those in a minute. If I select appear and make sure I've got that text box selected and then select animation pane, in here, you can see another pane opens up. Let me just get rid of that formatting window, gives enough space in here. And that little tag appears. And that basically means now we're going to be applying the animation to this particular text box. You can see that it's listed here. Um, and if I right click on that, you'll see there's an effect options. And within there, I've got some options about how things are going to appear. So and if I particularly look down here where it says animate text, and instead of all at once, if I do by word and I leave that timing as 0.5 in there, you can see as soon as I add that, it does a little preview and you can see that text animates on screen. And again, if I go back to um, the effect options and I can tweak that timing a little bit down to 0.2 of a second. So you can see that animated text um, effect that you get on a lot of these videos is really easy to achieve with um, PowerPoint because it's exactly the kind of thing that PowerPoint's designed to do. So if I go back to my uh, first slide here and go to slideshow and do from the beginning, at this point, I need to use the arrow keys to progress through my slides. And there's the end of the presentation. But what I can do with each slide is I can start to think about how one might move from the other. And that includes transitions and timings as well. 
So if I go back to that first slide and I go to transitions this time, I can say that rather than advance the slide on a mouse click, let's move that slide on after four seconds. Now normally four seconds would be the minimum amount of time that I would expect to see some text on screen. So I wouldn't really go for slides that were any more than four seconds unless you were looking for a kind of speedier editing effect. Okay, so this time if I go back to my slideshow and I do from the beginning, now after four seconds, three, four, you'll see I get that transition. What I can also do is I can click on slide two and go to transitions and um, select how that slide is going to appear. So you can see I've selected push here. So when we add transitions, what we don't do is do a transition on how a slide is going to leave. We set the transition for how a slide is going to appear. So if I'd clicked um, on that first slide and put the transition in, it would be how that first slide would appear. And I don't want any transition at the beginning because I want that to kind of set. So I've got my transition set. And again, we've got loads of different transitions to play with here. We've got one that will slide over the top, one that would push in, a cheesy fade through. It just depends on the kind of effect that you're going for. So normally you might just go with no transition, just a straight cut, or you might go with something fairly simple. So I've just added that push on there. And of course, once we start messing around with the um, timing of the slides, then we also might want to start to think about the timing of some of our effects on the page. And that's where the animation pane really starts to come into its own. Because once we start adding more effects and timings, that starts to act more like a, a timeline. But just for now, I'm going to keep that a little bit uh, simpler. So the next step is to add some audio. And there are a couple of ways that we can add audio here. If I take the first slide and go to insert, and over here you can see we've got the option to do audio, and audio on my PC. And I've got a couple of um, audio tracks in here. This is just a sound that I recorded holding the phone up in the air just to record the atmosphere of the streets, but it could be some script, it could be a, a music track. Um, the actual content of the audio doesn't matter. So I click insert on that and you'll see it appears as a little speaker icon. And again, there are a couple of um, things that I can do here. Now that I'm in the audio tools option by default, in playback, I can fade in and fade out. So I could set a fade here of a second. Um, but the important stuff is around here. So I want this audio to play all the way through my presentation, just as kind of background atmospheric sound. So the easiest way to do that is for me literally just to click play in background. And what that does is it starts the playback of the audio automatically, and importantly, it plays it across all of the slides. And then lastly, I'm gonna make sure that hide during show is set, because that means this little speaker icon and all of the other bits and pieces associated with it won't appear as part of the presentation. So if I preview that slideshow now from the beginning, so you can hear that sound playing all the way through. Now, that might be something um, that you might not want to do. If you've got a script, you might want various bits of script or interview sound to play on particular slides, and that's fine. You just find your slide, do insert and audio, and then you just make sure that you don't have the play um, in background option open. So with my... Um, Video finished, and obviously I add more frames here. The next step is simply just go to File and Export and Create a Video. And I've got some options here. So the first option is what resolution do you want to export at? So I've got um, an option for computer and HD displays, which is 720. I've got an option for internet, which is 480 by 480. And I've got an option for portable devices, um, which is 240 by 240. Um, it's up to you how much um, file sizes you're comfortable moving around, but I would always go for the highest quality that you can. You might find you get the option for even higher at 1080 by 1080. If we're uploading to Instagram, Instagram is only going to take 1080 by 1080 maximum anyway. Then we've got use recorded timings and narrations. 
or we can don't use recording time as iterations. Now, if you remember, I set one of my slides to the first slide to run for four seconds. So now it's going to default to that. But if there are, sli if there are slides where I haven't set those timings, then the output is going to automatically set that to be five seconds. So if I hadn't set any timings in PowerPoint, then by default, each slide would appear for five seconds. And then I click Create Video, and it goes uh, away and offers me a place to save that. Let's click Save. And then it quietly chugs away in the background, and down here you can see that downloading. It doesn't take very much time at all for that video to be exported. And once it's exported, that's a file we can then um, transfer across to our mobile device. Unfortunately, there's no web-based upload for Instagram, um, but we could email it or use WeTransfer or Dropbox or any of those other applications to move it across to our mobile device and upload it.